Old cracking and moldy caulk can make the nicest bathrooms look absolutely horrible. And while caulk is necessary to keep water from going where it's not supposed to, it isn't always a permanent solution. That's why it's really important for you to take care of any type of caulk issues as soon as possible because we don't want any water getting to areas that it's not supposed to and ruining anything that's behind it. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the critical steps, everything from selecting the right caulk for the job all the way through to getting those professional finish results that you're looking for. And since it seems like tubs and showers are one of the most common places where caulk tends to fail, probably because of all the soaps and the chemicals that are used to clean those areas, we're going to use this shower as our project for this video, and also because it's on my list of to-dos. So the first question we need to answer is what type of caulk do you need to use? Now, this can be really confusing because in addition to all the brands that are available, there are a lot of different types that are available in addition to colors and different options. So let me break this down for you as best as I can. And I'll go into a little bit more detail here as it relates to tubs and showers. But in general, when it comes to caulk, the first point you need to keep in mind is that you don't want to go with the cheapest option available. Now, I totally understand trying to save money on home improvement projects. Believe me, I get it but caulk is not one of those places where you wanna save the money. The caulk that you select needs to be able to last because you don't wanna to have to go through this process more often than you need to. So you need to select a high quality caulk that will last a long time, that will get the job done, and one that you're going to have a bigger return on your investment over time as opposed to immediately. The second rule of thumb is to be sure to select caulk that doesn't stand out. The caulk that you go with needs to blend in. And so when you're selecting the caulk, the two basic colors that you need to look for typically are white and clear. If you're looking at caulking something that has a specific color to it, typically if you're going to do a project that's outside uh, in an area that has like siding or something like that, then you can start looking at different colors of caulk. But otherwise, I would typically recommend that you stick with either white or clear for the job. And when you're selecting a clear caulk, make sure it has a notice on the front of it that says it will not yellow over time. That's probably the biggest disadvantage to caulk that's completely clear. So you wanna be sure that when you select a clear caulk that it says it will not yellow. Now, when it comes to selecting a caulk for bathrooms, I typically either recommend a silicone-based caulk or a hybrid caulk. So let's talk about the pros and cons of each. So the advantage with silicone caulks are these are pretty much your standard common caulks that you would see inside of a bathroom. They last a long, long time. They have really good adhesion properties to a lot of different types of surfaces, and they're a great all-around choice. Now, some of the disadvantages with silicone, they can be a little bit harder to work with, especially if it comes to removing the silicone, although I do have some tips in this video that will help you with that. Now, with hybrid caulks, they're typically a blend of silicone and polyurethane caulks, so they offer the best of both worlds of those two types of caulks. The advantage here is that they have really good durability, great adhesion, and a really long lifespan. The disadvantage is they're not as easy to apply and also they're going to be typically the most expensive option. Now for bathrooms, you need to make sure that no matter what you go with, that the caulk is rated to be waterproof and that it's mold and mildew resistant. This is really, really important for bathrooms because you tend to build up a lot of moisture and a lot of moisture tends to linger in the bathroom. So there's a lot more opportunity for mold to grow. And yes, mold will grow inside of caulk and around caulk and it's really, really difficult to remove. Another thing you could look for is some caulks can be in contact with water in as little as 30 minutes. So if you're redoing a bathroom that's heavily used, this is a great option. So for this project, I've selected this 100% silicone-based clear caulk from Gorilla. You can see that it's 100%. It says so right here on the side. It also says that it won't yellow over time. This can get wet within 30 minutes, and it says it's mold and mildew resistant. The other thing I really like about this is that it says it has a lifetime guarantee. So this is what we're going to use. Now we have to remove the old caulk before we can start applying this. As far as removing the caulk goes, there's a lot of different techniques that you can use, but I'm gonna share with you the ones that I know work for sure. So the first thing you should do is when you're removing the caulk is to try and remove any large sections of caulk that you can that are already detached. Now, anything that's still adhered to the surface, you still need to get rid of. You can't just caulk over it. You have to make sure the surface is completely free and clear of any type of old caulk or any old caulk residue. So you wanna be sure to remove that as best as you can. The most common way to get rid of caulk is to either score it with a utility knife, or you can even use a sharp painter's tool to kind of get in there and break up that connection between the surfaces and the caulk itself. Once you do that, you should be able to remove most of it. Now you're still gonna have some residue left over that you're probably gonna to have to scrape on a bit in order to get it completely removed, but the painter's tool works really, really well in this case. Now, if you're removing caulk from something other than porcelain or ceramic based tile, you're gonna to wanna to be really careful that you don't scratch the surface with any kind of a tool that you use to remove the caulk. 
Things like acrylic tubs can be really easy to scratch and damage, so you want to make sure to take your time here and not get super aggressive with it. They also make a specialized caulk remover tool that you can get. Now this can be a great option, especially if you're removing the caulk from ceramic or porcelain tile. If you're gonna be removing it from other surfaces, I'd be really careful because again, these blades can be pretty sharp and they can damage softer surfaces. Now I will say while these can be a time saver, you're still probably gonna to have to remove the rest of the residue with some other method, either again by scraping it off with a putty knife or some other techniques that we're gonna talk about here. You can use a special chemical that's designed to help you remove caulk, but you have to be careful because again, if you're removing caulk from something like an acrylic based tub, some of these cleaners, some of these caulk removers can actually eat through those tubs and destroy it. So you need to be really careful and really read the fine print on those caulk removing chemicals. Now, in addition to these harsh chemicals, there are also some other common household substances that you can use that can help make the job go really easy. You can see that I'm removing the rest of this residue with alcohol. All I did was spray down the surface with some alcohol. I just put the alcohol in a little spray bottle, sprayed down the surface, let it sit for a few seconds, and then wiped it up. Using alcohol to remove the silicone caulk works really, really well. And in fact, this process was able to get some silicone caulk off of the tile that I didn't even see. Another common household chemical that you can use, or it's not really chemical, but something else you can use is vinegar. This is something that you can probably have underneath, you know, your, your cabinet in your kitchen or in your laundry room. Now, I've also seen a tip where someone said that you can use WD-40, and I haven't tried it myself, and I'm not saying that it doesn't work, but I would be a little bit concerned about applying WD-40 to a surface to remove caulk when you're gonna come right back and put new caulk down. Unlike vinegar and unlike alcohol that evaporate, WD-40 applies somewhat of a lubricant to the surface, so I'd be afraid to use that and then put new caulk down because I wouldn't be sure that that new caulk would actually stick to the surface the way I'd want it to. Now, again, I haven't used it personally, that's just my opinion, but in my opinion, I would stick to one of the other solutions that I talked about. Another option you can use is a heat gun. This can be great because it'll heat up that caulk, it'll heat it up to where you can scrape it off a little bit easier. And the only disadvantage to this is I would be careful if you're trying to remove it in an area that might be a little bit more susceptible to heat damage. You don't wanna get the area too hot and cause other issues. If you're gonna be removing it from something that's a little bit easier to damage, I might look for a different option there. To apply caulk, you have a couple different options. You can either buy caulk in tubes like this that can load into a typical caulk gun, or if you don't have a large area to caulk, you can also buy ones in squeeze tubes. That could be a really great cost-effective option in order to help you save some money and not waste material. Now, when you're using a caulk gun, I recommend applying the caulk with a steady, even pressure, and then move the caulk tube along the crevice as you see the crevice being filled up. If you see any gaps in the caulk to where it looks like there's not enough caulk being applied, you can simply push the tip of the tube back over that spot and squeeze out some more caulk. And if you see that you're putting too much caulk in the area, it starts to squeeze out from the sides, for example, then you know that you either need to back off on the pressure or to move a little bit faster pace. Something you should be aware of on a typical caulk gun, whenever you release pressure on the handle, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's still not forcing that caulk out of that tube. So in order to do that, you wanna make sure to hit the release button that's on the handle or it's located just slightly above the handle typically, and that should release most of the pressure on that tube to prevent excess caulk from flowing out. Another option you have is to use a caulk gun that doesn't continue to apply pressure when you release the handle. So one of those options is something like this. This is called the Silly Gun, and this is a compact caulk gun that you can use to apply caulk in tight areas or pretty much for any job. The nice thing I like about this, or one of the nice things I like about this, is as soon as you release the handle, it stops applying pressure to that caulk tube so you don't have that extra caulk flowing out of the end. It makes starting and stopping a lot easier and it's something you don't have to worry about as much as if you would with a typical caulk gun. As far as the caulk tube itself, you wanna make sure to cut off the tip at an angle and not straight across. This is gonna help you have a more consistent finish and less to spread out in the finishing steps, which we're gonna talk about here in a second. Also, as a little tip, a lot of these tubes have a diameter of the tube at the different points where you can cut it. So depending on how much caulk and how much of a gap you need to fill, you can use that as a reference for how much of the tip you need to cut off. I would start out with a diameter that as small as you think you might need because you can always make it bigger, but you can't make it smaller again. Also, a lot of these tubes have markings at the exact angle that you should cut these at. Just cut it across at the line and you should be fine there. Some caulk tubes have a seal inside of it that needs to be punctured as well. Uh, in this example, this end screws off. 
and I'll show you what this looks like in here. There's a foil seal on the inside of this tube that just needs to be punctured with either a utility knife, a nail, or even a puncture tool that is typically found on your caulk guns. Just stick that in there, make sure you spread that foil seal apart. It'll make it a lot easier to spread, uh, especially if you don't remove it at all. It's gonna be really hard to come out. All right, so now we're at the point to where all the old caulk has been removed, you've applied the new caulk in its place, and you wanna make sure you have a nice smooth finish that you can be proud of. So here's some tips to help you get that smooth finish to make your job look really professional. To make sure the caulk is filled the gap completely, you wanna either use your finger, which is what I see a lot of people use, and in fact, I use my finger most of the time. They also make a spreader tool that you can use. This can be found in typically any hardware store, and they typically have different diameters of radius that you can select on the spreader tool to get that look that you're looking for, depending again on how big that gap is that you're trying to fill. Just move along slowly, forcing the caulk inside of the crevice, and then any excess caulk you have, all you have to do is wipe that off with a wet cloth. Make sure you're applying enough caulk and then you're wiping away any of the excess caulk regularly. Now, if you wanna use your finger, I would highly recommend that you check the warning labels to make sure that there isn't any kind of a warning against there being any kind of skin irritants in the caulk. If there is, then you risk you know, damaging your skin and that's not fun. So always, always, always follow the manufacturer's instructions and do things by the book. Now, another tip that I love is to use painter's tape or masking tape to mask off the areas where you don't want the caulk to be. So I would leave either an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch gap wherever I'm putting that caulk. And then I would apply the caulk Still use a spreader tool to force the caulk into the gap, but then once that's done, all you have to do is remove the painter's tape and any excess caulk that may have spread out will be on that tape and you can simply throw it away. Now that the job's done, you might have some leftover caulk and be wondering, well, is there anything I can do with this or do I have to simply throw it away? Now, the common word of advice with this is you simply have to throw away any leftover caulk material that you have, but that's simply a myth and that's not true. Some caulk tubes include a cap that you can reinstall back on the tube. You can use this to help keep the air out of the tube and preserve it for a short period of time. Now, if you're wanting to preserve the caulk to use it for a longer period of time out, then I would recommend using these. So this is called, let's see if I can get this here. Oh, what is this? Oh, there we go. This is called the caulk keeper. So uh, this is a little device that sticks on the end of the caulk tube. Um, and it looks similar to a typical cap that you would see on a caulking tube, but it's got a little bitty pin on the inside. I don't know if you can see that in there. It's got a little bitty pin on the inside that goes down inside of the tube and it helps seal out, uh, seal out all the air that can get inside of it. Now, the thing about this is you wouldn't think that this would work really, really well for a long period of time, but I have to say that I've used this on a tube of caulk that was as old as two years old and the caulk was still good inside. So these things work really, really well. They're really, really affordable. I think they're just a couple bucks for you know one or two of these things and uh, they're well worth the investment in my opinion. I have a bunch of them on uh, the caulk that I've used in my garage, the stuff that I'm storing. So if I have to come back and use a specific type of caulk again for a project, I don't have to go back and rebuy something else. I can just go and reuse what I already have. So this has been really, really great. So the downside with these are if you're going to store uh, anything else like an adhesive or an epoxy, these don't work very well. And uh, I think the reason why is because it reacts to the plastic that this is made out of and these tend to deteriorate and they'll crack and uh, it won't protect it. So you'll end up ruining these things and you'll also ruin the tube of, of adhesive as well. So I wouldn't recommend those for adhesive, but any type of caulking material, um, these are definitely worth the investment. I have another video you can check out here that has some additional tips, but otherwise I wanna say thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help me out. And otherwise I will see you in the next video.